Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're keeping well. I'm going to uh, do something a little bit different today. As the title will have given away, I'm going to uh, do a very quick review of a tripod. A tripod I picked up recently because my old one was junk and I lost a foot in Sherwood Forest one day a few weeks ago. I've never had a lot of luck with tripods. They've always been a compromise. I've had to settle for some flaw, some weakness and I was really hoping to get something a bit more complete this time. I'd had difficulties with the, the leg grips, the actual locking mechanisms, and I've had both types in years gone by, both flip locks and twist locks. And my last junkie tripod uh, was twist locks. Boy, was it twists. Time after time, I'd unlock a leg to the point where it felt loose and find that the, the leg wouldn't extend still. It still hadn't actually released. And I've been fighting that for the last two years. It's been a battle and a half. And I hadn't realized how much of a pain it had become until I picked up this new tripod. So that, combined with a few of its features, have made me want to do a little review in the hope that if anybody's out there thinking about treating themselves in the new year, perhaps, then this might be on their comparison list. And some of these features might just tip you over the edge because for me I can't rate this highly enough. Important for me to say I'm not affiliated, Van Gogh don't know I'm making this review. There is nothing in this for me other than the pleasure of saying I think I've found my tripod. How cool is that? And anybody out there struggling with a tripod will know how cool that is. So let's get into it. Okay so I'm not going to uh, get into too much detail. I don't think anybody wants that much detail. It's a tripod. And that's always been my approach. I've always looked at them as a necessary evil because they've always been a pain in the butt. But using a, a well thought through, high quality tripod makes life so much easier. In these last few weeks of me being out, I've really relished my tripod. When previously, I, I kid you not, it's always been something that I've resented in one way, shape or form. Usually because it's either not tall enough or because the, the leg locking mechanism takes too much effort. I've always struggled with it. I've never found a tripod that just hits the spot, that just feels right. So now I have, the difference it makes to me shooting now is considerable. The first thing that I'll touch on is the height of this tripod. Now height to me, in practical terms, is really, really important. And my previous tripod was about six inches too short, so it's always been a, it's always been a nightmare for me. This tripod stands 172 and a half centimetres tall, which is roughly, to the sole plate, five and a half foot. Now I'm six foot two, and when I'm shooting, let's wait for the siren to pass. So when I'm shooting, I'm wandering around the, the woodland and I'm finding compositions at my walking height. So my eyes sit at about five foot eight, five foot 10, something like that. When I find the composition by eye, Historically, I was setting my tripod up, mounting my camera. I'd look at the viewfinder or the, the live view, and I'd then have to battle with the tripod in order to find the composition I saw by eye, because the tripod wasn't at the same height. The composition would be different. It would always be a challenge for me to compose what I saw based on the height of the tripod. So this now, uh, 172 and a half centimetres, five and a half foot, means that once I've mounted the camera, the viewfinder and live view are edging towards that six foot mark. I can, I can use it practically when I'm trying to compose a shot based on what I saw with my naked eye. And that's a huge deal. The number of times I've tried to find rocks to prop up a short tripod or I've looked for things in the environment I could sit the tripod on just to raise it enough so that I could angle the camera down and, and eliminate some of the light. 172 and a half centimetres tall, five and a half foot. It's the sweet spot. If I was going to name this tripod, instead of calling it the VO3 plus 263AB, I'd have called it sweet spot because so much of the features in this tripod hit my sweet spot. So forever in a day, I've now decided to call my tripod sweet spot. And I'll reference that in future vlogs. I think for me, one of the other key things is the weight of the tripod. 
I've usually had relatively lightweight tripods because at this end of the, the scale of models of tripod, we're outside of travel tripods and ultralight tripods, we've gone into field tripods, and then we've started to climb the quality scale. So we come to a point where what you see many reviews talk about is how stable or how heavy a tripod is when there's a criticism or a complaint about one. Now there's a trade-off here, isn't there, between how heavy a tripod is versus how stable it is, and the two things are, are directly related. We can't have an ultralight, ultra-stable tripod, I don't think, and to, 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 to make that statement we have to define what ultralight is and ultra-stable is, so it's quite a subjective. Now for sweet spot and I, that point is at around the weight of this tripod. I don't want to be carrying any more than this. This is my optimum. This is the most I would want to have on my shoulder. However, for that weight, I've got so many rich features, it's almost, it's like overwhelming. I mean, to think that this tripod can do what it can do for the weight that I've got, it's a no-brainer for me. I have zero issue carrying this weight with these features, and that's the trade-off. The quality and the long-term use of this product I can't comment on just yet. I'm going to have to leave it. But in a year's time, maybe I'll do a review of Top Up and just explain how it's fared a year on. Vanguard quote this as being a two and a half kilo tripod. That's two and a half kilos complete, ball head and tripod. I weighed it myself and it came in at 2.465 kilos. So it's, it's bang on the money. It is a two and a half kilo tripod. Now for some people like me, who think, crikey, I don't want to be carrying two and a half kilos around with me all day long. I have to take into account what I get for that two and a half kilos. It's not the lightest tripod in the world, but those lighter tripods don't have the feature that Sweet Spot has. And um, that's the trade-off. Do you want the features? And if so, expect to carry a little weight. Now, that being said, in the comparisons I did when I looked at this versus the Manfrotto, the 190X Pro, and others, I looked at Benro as well, this is not. This is not by any means a heavy tripod. I'm not dissing Manfrotto here, please don't think I am, it's a quality brand. But the 190X Pro with the X Pro head, the extra X Pro head with a quick release plate, it actually comes in almost three kilos, which is half a kilo more than this. Now that's 500 grams I really don't want on my, on my case. If I'm out here for six or eight hours, covering some miles, climbing over things, under things, around things, in things. <laughs> So sweet spot comes in at two and a half kilos and at two and a half kilos, that's bang on the money for me. Now I'm, I'm, a, I'm a pretty chunky chap. I'm, I'm a big guy, I'm six foot two tall or thereabouts, maybe shrunk a little bit in this last few years. But um, at two and a half kilos, I can carry that relatively comfortably all day long. But I have a smile on my face from the start to the finish because I know what I've got for that two and a half kilos. And that to me, is what makes it such a valuable bit of kit. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing this review, because everything about it is just so. It's just right, it's so well considered, so well manufactured. Thought's been given to every practical aspect, as far as I can tell, about what we would want from an ideal tripod. And this, my friends, is it. This, for me, hits the nail on the head. Top marks, Vanguard, 10 out of 10. I'm not gonna talk about build quality too much. Uh, I should but I'm not going to get into detail. I'll give it a mention when I talk about the actual controls and the, and the legs and the centre. I might have to talk about quality. It's incredible. i just give mention to uh, one other feature on here is the uh, monopod leg. I don't use a monopod very often, and I'll use it actually even less now with this articulating centre column. But having a monopod leg on the, the tripod simply means... It's the one there... This leg can be unscrewed. And then what we do is we screw that into the base of the centre column, having removed it from the, the tripod head. That will give us three extending legs on the centre column, giving us a rough height of well over six and a half foot, I think. Certainly well over six foot. I have used monopods in the past in an attempt to shoot over the top of obstacles or to put my camera in some obscure positions where my tripod just simply wouldn't reach. With this and the adjustable centre column I'm less likely in my type of shooting to use that monopod. However there are always occasions where a monopod is useful and knowing that that feature is built into this tripod is good, it's healthy because I'm not carrying any weight penalty 
for having that functionality. I've got helicopters now. I'll just let him pass. So having a monopod function built into your tripod is it's an indication that the manufacturer has given it thought and occasionally I'm sure I'll break it out even if it's only to knock my drone out of a tree because that's going to happen soon I can feel it coming on leg lock mechanism wow <sighs> never thought I'd be saying those three words in the same sentence with a happy heart <laughs> it's always been a bind to me my last tripod as I said previously I would have to give at least three turns to unlock a leg to be able to be able to extend it sometimes i'd have to go back for a fourth because it hadn't quite released enough what a pain in the arrow just such a nightmare anybody who experiences this knows and the worst thing for me about that is that when you get towards the end of a shoot and you're getting tired you know your opportunities are reducing and then you get into that period where you've got half-hearted shots you're not sure it would be nice to try just see what happens in post-processing i've had times where i'd just carry on walking because it's too much effort to adjust my tripod and that tells me i had the wrong tripod because if a tripod isn't easy to adjust it's no good as a tripod but now and i'll demonstrate it quickly in a moment those legs are adjustable in a single motion so it's a just over i would say honestly i could say quarter of a turn and i wouldn't be misleading you but i think just over a quarter of a turn and an extension is the way this tripod works it's three extending legs as a field tripod and as most field tripods tend to be rather than four so there are only two instead of three sets of adjusters i'd never really considered how valuable it would be to have a slightly longer tripod and the difference is considerable both in how easy it is to carry and fewer turns to adjust your tripod because you only have two joints instead of three joints simple science really isn't it but i'm more aware because i've suffered the worst case scenario okay just before i show you a few of the features i just want to mention the accessories that come with this and the tripod for note is a complete unit it is the tripod itself and the ball head if you were to buy a comparable product product with similar features from someone like manfrotto and my comparison was their 190x pro model i think you usually buy the tripod base and then attach to it your choice of head which carries two individual costs this is complete and the price of this i'll come to at the end but it's a whole unit so the ball head and the tripod are one unit together with the option of screw in full metal spiked feet and that is awesome for me as a removable option because sometimes i'll go off into the peak district up on the hills and the moors and i'll shoot up there on a, a surface that's very different to the woodland it's often quite rocky and a combination of surfaces mossy bracken soft stuff right next to rock and having spiked feet in that environment can really help stabilize a tripod now this bad boy this is stable without the spikes but i will definitely be using them when i get out there because having that surety that your tripod's well planted on otherwise rocky surfaces rocky in both senses of the word is it's really valuable so they're included they come within the package you also get um, a second mount a full metal lock levered mount that you can attach to this multi-angle center column and that's when the column is extended flipped horizontal and then on the other side of the center column you can attach this metal mount that's also included within the box it's not an optional extra that you pay more for and last but not least is the bag that comes with this now i'm not usually i toss mine away I, I mean i don't literally toss them away i'll use them for something else but for me i'm usually carrying my tripod it's always ready to deploy when i'm in the woodland landscape environment and i've never had a bag of value because the bags have never been worth anything they've usually been cheap tacky poorly manufactured barely fit the tripod kind of <laughs> accessories this is completely different 
completely different ball game. It's a really high quality, it's a, a dense, looks like a very hard wearing outer material. And then internally it's fully padded. And I'm not talking about padded to the level where they can say it's a padded bag, just padded. This actually is substantial. It's a substantial padding. It will protect the tripod. And then inside there you've got a zip pocket, perfect for your spike metal feet and the tool to lock them off. Now, if I'm going out for a day and a night or a couple of days over into the Peak District, I'm going to be hiking miles. I'm going to be doing some distance. I don't want to be carrying a tripod that has this kind of weight to it over long distances. So I'm going to use that bag. I can't not use that bag. It's such good quality. I certainly won't repurpose it for anything else. And that is included within the deal. Now, just on that note, bear in mind Vanguard do actually manufacture a, a range of luggage high quality, well regarded luggage. And this has come from the same stable. It's not a compromise, it's an absolute, it's an absolute brilliant thing. Now I don't have that with me because I'm out in the woodland and I don't need it today. But what I can do is obviously pop up links to their website where you will get images of this product as well as its sister products. And uh, I'm sure there'll be images on there of what, what you get in the box. Okay, so. Let's introduce you to uh, Sweet Spot. Um, I'll start from the top and work my way down. I'll adjust the tripod and show you some of the contorted ways it can uh, be of use to us. And then I'll demonstrate how the leg locks work and how easy they are to lock and open. Open and lock. Whichever way round you use your tripod. So from the top. The tripod fundamentally is a full metal construction. One of the unusual things about this, apart from how sexy it looks, is the <laughs> levers. All the individual levers are CNC machined aluminium alloy. So there's a really high quality feel to each individual lever and all the adjustments that we have in and around the tripod head. You'll notice in the base here a metal ring that I think has a bearing insert, which is what allows one of the 360 rotating plates to rotate smoothly in this tripod head. So, a CNC machined locking knob here for the Arca Swiss compatible head. In the top of the head there, it's worth a mention that built into the actual sole plate, we have a spirit level. So, if you were to be setting your tripod for any reason, you can actually level this prior to mounting your camera. So you can set your tripod up without the weight of the camera on it. That's a really well considered thought. And having it built into the sole plate, you know the sole plate is going to be exactly level. The next thing is coming down to the actual body of the tripod. We have a second integrated spirit level. And the reason for that is because if we lift this centre column and articulate it, then level isn't relevant from that point up. But we may want level for a pan rotation or a panorama at the spirit level head. So a spirit level built into the sole plate and a spirit level built into the tripod head have been considered and included. And they're a nice quality spirit level. I'm not gonna mention these levers again. You can see that they look quality. Apart from one thing, and that is the thought that's gone into their ergonomics. This is the, the lever that adjusts the actual ball head. It's the largest lever, and that's the lever that gets most use. So it's great for your thumb. It can be used very simply in either direction to lock and unlock. It's just ergonomically perfect. <laughs> I can't imagine a better adjustment for a ball head than that one. And then coming around the side, we have this little fella, which is tiny, tiny little locking lever. And this just locks off the rotation. Quarter of a turn, and now the actual ball head rotates. So for the purpose of taking panoramas or just swinging the head to form a composition somewhere, it literally is that simple to unlock, adjust, and relock. It can't get better than that. If you want to raise the centre column as a traditional tripod may, literally that's all there is to it. 
the size of the rubber o-ring there to create a cushion to stop metal hitting metal when that happens is considerable and I really like that because I have had o-rings fail on tripods in the past and there is nothing worse than having that metal on metal twang every time the, the centre column retracts. So that is the head adjustment, rotation, ball head and plate, plate locking mechanism and then this one here is purely to adjust the centre column. We have the all-important lock for adjusting the centre column. So to articulate this what we need to do is obviously we undo the lock for the centre column and we extend that to its maximum. We lock off the centre column and then if we release this lever we can then drop the entire centre column into a horizontal position. Fold back that lever and we've locked off the arm. So you can imagine your camera sat on the, the ball head here and we have an articulating arm off the top of the uh, tripod head. And this is where the, this particular tripod gets really funky. So if we do the next locking lever, the one below, below that, what this actually does is it locks in place a second rotating head effectively and it allows us to rotate the entire arm. So we have a full 360 degree sweep of the whole articulated top. Now we have 360 rotation on the ball head and we have 360 degrees here on the top of the tripod giving us a fully articulating arm. Now one of the nicest things about this particular arm in comparison to other tripods that have a similar similar feature is that this will actually drop below horizontal. So let me just adjust this. Unlock the arm again. From its horizontal position we can actually rotate in any direction and we can lower the whole head down to any height we choose. For me that is a massive deal. Massive deal because it will allow me to mount my camera below the base of the actual tripod head and that brings me on to leg adjustment. I think that's pretty much covered the basics of this tripod. You can get the gist of how you're going to be able to use the plate, the rotating ball head with the multi-angle centre column, the fully articulating centre column that rotates as well as allows for a below horizontal drop in your ball head. So that covers almost the entire globe around the top of this tripod which is phenomenal. Now, uh, these locking uh, plates here allow us to adjust each leg in a set of three different degrees. I don't know the degrees, I'll put them up on screen, I don't know them off the top of my head, but if you want to adjust the legs and splay them out further, it's a simple case of depressing these buttons on the side, which lifts this plate, you can then adjust your tripod legs and the angle is 80 degrees for the top one I do remember that so if you imagine shortening these legs down to just one extension that's going to give you a very very tight tripod at ground level and with the articulating center column for macro work this is it this covers it now it's worthwhile me just saying for anybody who shoots similarly to me, I'm not sure anybody does, but <laughs> I shoot three types of photography generally. Uh, woodland landscape, I'm outdoors, I'm in the elements, so I need something that's going to take weather, and it's going to take wind, and it's going to take a rocky, unpredictable, unlevel terrain. I also shoot macro, outdoors and indoors, and this tripod will cover both. It will allow me to shoot macro in any environment because of the extension of those legs and that articulating head. I can get down to ground level with the lens of the camera really in close for macro shots. And whether I'm outdoors or indoors, it really doesn't matter because this sweet spot is going to do it. It's just all in one tripod. Now, previously, 
I had a macro tripod and I had my standard woodland photography tripod. I don't need to now. There's a cost saving to me there because I don't need to actually consider a second tripod. The third type of shooting I'll do is indoor and it's, I suppose, video based more than it is photography. But often I'll need lighting and typically that light has to come in an indoor studio kind of setting from a similar angle to where the camera is. So you want the light shooting towards where the camera is shooting. You need the two to be at a similar height. So typically I'd have a separate tripod for the light. So that's another tripod that I would have. And I've actually got about five tripods at home. This tripod even, not only does it cover macro and landscape woodland and all the variety of stuff that I might get up to, it also covers studio. Because with that articulating center column, if I drop that horizontal with a ball head on one side, on the other side, in the box comes a full metal head, adjustable head, um, that bolts onto the other end of this extending centre column. So when the centre column's horizontal, you go to your Vanguard box, you take out the metal head, you attach it to the other side of this, and then you have a horizontal pole, you've got your camera on one side, and you've got lighting on the other. And that, to me, is saving me another tripod, a lighting rig. I'm not a heavy user in that scenario, it's fair to say, but when those occurrences happen, I need somewhere to put my lights, and now I have it all built into Sweet Spot. Okay, so let me just demonstrate this, uh, these uh, locking rings here. You can see there, there's a, a metal, it looks like a, a metal outer with a rubber grip, and then inside, what looks like to be a metal collar. In all my previous tripods, there's been a plastic aspect to this twist grip, and they've always failed me. This one looks to be head and shoulders above all of those. And as I mentioned, it's, it's literally a quarter turn and that leg retracts. Smooth as silk. Quarter turn, the leg is locked. Same for the base. Quarter turn, so simple and it's locked. There's no more cranking. I know I no longer have to give it lots and lots of twists in order to extend legs. Quarter turn, full extension, quarter turn, job done. And that to me is a big deal. So that is the VO, Vanguard VO 3 plus 263 a, B. And that, my friends, gives a fair idea of why I love Sweet Spot so much. Highly functional, incredibly well built, superb attention to detail. All the CNC machined levers are all sized, related to their function. And that blows me away. That shows that somebody has sat down and really considered what we as photographers want from a tripod. I hope that's been reasonably informative. I'm not much of a reviewer, as you can tell, but I needed to say something about this product. I wanted to share it with people because it's so good. I don't remember the last time I came across a product that was this well considered, this well manufactured, something that I'm extremely motivated to put into good use every day. So that's it, folks. That's the Vanguard VO3 Plus 263AB coming in at 172.5 centimeters maximum height five and a half foot plus your camera weighing in at two and a half kilos complete included attachment for a second mount to that center column when it's articulated a very high quality carry bag with internal pocket for those also included full metal spiked feet with tools okay time for coffee so hope you've enjoyed it hope it's been interesting Thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another. And if you can't be good, you know the drill. Just be careful. And I'll see you very soon. Take care. Bye for now.